I have a couple of different uh, approaches. Sometimes I sketch. Sometimes I just start sketching on a piece of paper to free my mind and creativity. That's one of the ways I do it. And sometimes that sketching leads to actually locking into a scene in my imagination and try to hear and perceive and see um, everything that's in that scene. I guess I need um, somewhere the visual world, um, the world of image, and even from, from sketching to almost like a film-like scene in order to be able to capture the mood and the atmosphere of a creative idea. Completion and, and endings are, for me, one of the biggest challenges in, in, in creativity in music, I think. And uh, I learned that dragging an idea on can also lose its power. You know, that it, it's almost like, you know, uh, appreciating death, you know. It's also Buddhist uh, meditation on the death of an idea and not being afraid of it. Um, what gives something the power in creativity is that you have the right ending. So for me, it's very, very important on stage. Um, perhaps it's a little bit trickier when you're actually on your own composing, creating, you know, at, at, on your desk. Having deadlines is good, but to make your own deadline in the sense of ma making your own uh, uh, ending in a performance or in a creative process is uh, it was, was one of the biggest challenges I had early in my career. I think I had 10 years from 1991 to 2001 where I had a lot of creative freedom. It was really mostly in Europe. At some point, you know, when I was looking for another way of composing than just a conventional way, you know, looking at architecture and dealing with architecture, which is a real world bridge, I'd say the cousin of engineering, but connected to visual art. So a more artistic form of engineering. And one of my best friends is a Swiss architect who lives in California. And I remember discussing with him how resources, limiting resources, time frames, changing the dynamic, the marketplace. Ultimately, you have clients, you have the marketplace. So there was the challenge between creative, creativity and commerce. Why I keep being drawn to the world of architecture and architects and designers is because I like that, that uh, uh, real world pressure. I have this almost uh, uh, approach to composition where it's also about moving musicians in space. So it's about using the acoustics of space. You know, I, I prefer to perform not in traditional concert halls or uh, uh, traditional stage audience separation situations. So I like to use the entire uh, materials, the navigational possibilities, the acoustics. So if I'm doing something in a, in, on a normal stage, then the point is to internalize that whole spatialization within the music and then I do that by going to my hybrid instruments. So my instruments themselves have, you know, um, extensions, their, their trumpet innovations. So the instruments themselves, some of them, like my hybrid trumpet, the one that be the trumpet, are, are very so specifically designed for spatialized music that it leads to spatialized compositions. And then other instruments like the Naga Phoenix, which is a microtonal slide trumpet, means that it's already dealing with the microtonal sound world. One was my grandmother. She was a matriarch of, of the Jain community, and we loved each other, even though I am the furthest from that conventional Jane, Gujarati Jane, but somehow we had an incredible connection. So it, it transcended, you know, that sustained me. I was born in Calcutta. I lived in Mumbai as a child. So I went back and I was raised in the U.S. So I went back after 16 years and I, I saw my grandmother and something happened there as a 22 year old. And that relationship never died. Uh, someone who was constantly loving and, and spiritually there for you. And then the second experience I had was um, 
when I was in Singapore. I lived in Singapore, and a friend of mine said that you should go. Um, there's a retreat by a Vietnamese Zen Buddhist monk, Thich Nhat Hanh. So I went to this retreat with this 80-year-old Zen master that Martin Luther King nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize in the 60s. I went to this retreat for two, three days, and it was all about mindfulness. And that was a total transformational experience for me. Ultimately, I think human beings will always feel disconnected without a visceral experience. Digital technology is, is here to stay. You know? And the question is how to make it more visceral. You know, I can imagine people, musicians, you know, people who just start singing, performing for each other at home. Suddenly, there's a kind of almost a 3D hologram. And then suddenly, whatever expression you have turns into a kind of a, a mutating hologram, a, a visualization in real time. The whole thing is that people want to touch it, smell it, taste it, hear it. They want to use the sense, the desire to, to make the digital world more visceral. Not even a tool. A tool is something that is palpable, but an instrument is a tool that actually uh, brings out your soul. Because I've seen, you know, shoe shiners in Calcutta make music. They shine these shoes the way other people make music. So, you know, it's a question of also making a tool into an instrument. And I think everybody has a need to uh, either use the body as a musical instrument to sing or, or, to, or to play an instrument. There is an inherent musicality. And I believe that that, that is that drive to, to, to make things visceral. <laughs>